Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Koss and on today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to talk about when you rename your files in Lightroom, where in your process, and how you rename them. So first we'll take a look at how you rename your files. And I'll just start off by saying there's really no right or wrong way to rename your files. The most important thing is that you're consistent. So let's take a look here under the library menu, coming down to rename photo. This will bring up the rename photo window and you can see that we have a lot of file naming templates that ship by default with Lightroom. Of course, you can always go in and make your own, but let's take a look at probably the two most popular templates. The first one is going to be the custom name plus a sequence. When I choose that template, you can see that I can enter in whatever I want as custom text. So let's say, for example, I have a client with a last name of Smith. I can go ahead and enter in Smith, and we see from the example down here that we've got Smith with a hyphen, and then I just include my start number, like number one. So this works really well when you're doing different shoots for different clients. Another template that comes in really handy is this custom name plus original file number. Now, the only drawback to this template is that you have to remember, let's say for example you're at a wedding and you download one card and you rename those files. Well, that first card might have started at one, but then when you download and rename the second card, you would have to actually keep track of the new start number, right? Because the new start number would be, let's say you shot you know, 300 images on the first card, this would be 301. So there is a little bit of um, manual input that you have to do if you're using this template and you're downloading multiple cards. Of course, if you just have one card, it might be like a, a headshot at a portrait studio, in which case this works out beautifully. You put in your client's name and then just the start number of one, and more often than not, you will only have one card worth of images. Okay, the other template that I think is very handy is this custom name plus original file number. Now, just like the previous template, you can enter in whatever custom text you want here, but you'll notice that you don't enter in a start number. What Lightroom does is it keeps the original number from the camera and just adds that to your custom name. So we can see here, for example, in this file in the background, the number is 02391, and Lightroom picks that up and uses that as the original file number. So it, it goes ahead and gets rid of anything else that's in the original file name, because sometimes the digital cameras put other information there. It'll get rid of anything there and just keep the number. So this is really nice because now you can download more than one card and you really don't have to keep track of the file number and you, you, you won't get any overlapping file numbers. So those are probably the two most commonly used um, templates that ship by default with Lightroom. Of course, you can go in here and you can make your own. So let's go into the editor. And here we have the file name template editor. And all of these different options right here can be combined in any sequence you want to get your own custom file names. So we'll just take a look at what I use, for example. I'm going to delete everything that's in this area. And I'm just going to type in jcost with an underscore. So in my file naming convention, I include my name, the photographer's name, in the file. Of course, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, it's just what I do. Then what I'll do is I will actually use, under the sequence and date area, I'm going to insert the year. Now this is interesting. I, I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, why don't you just type in the year? If I enter in the date here, like the year or the month or the day, Lightroom's going to go out and look at the EXIF data in the image and pull the information from that image. So I won't need to change this every year because my camera will change every year and Lightroom's just using that information. So I'll go ahead and click insert. That'll insert the year and you can see here that we've got a preview and if I need to change this I can use the arrow here and get the drop down menu. But then I'll go ahead and add just another underscore. For me, underscores just make it easier to read. It makes the file name not run together as one. And then after this one, I will just add a sequence. And again, it depends on how many numbers you want in the sequence. I think this one will be just fine. Here's my preview. And now that I've actually edited this preset, I would come down to the bottom and choose Save Current Settings as New Preset. And I'll just call this JCost and then TCP for the complete picture, click Create, and now it becomes a preset. 
If I wanted to delete that preset, I can do so right here. I can also rename the preset later on. So now we've learned that you can type right in this dialog box, like a name. You can also select from any of the little tokens or the options right down here, and you can add any number of sequence numbers. I just want to point out this option right here. Um, the preset that we looked at just said file name. Um, what it's actually taking is the file name number suffix. So if you rename your files after importing them, and we'll take a look at that, that process in a minute. If you import your files and then rename them, you might want to select this as part of your custom file naming convention, where it will just take the sequence number from the camera name as opposed to the entire camera name. I know a lot of people also put in not just the year, but also the year, month, and date, and that's absolutely fine. Again, if you use one of these tokens, we're going to pull that information from the EXIF data on the individual image. But don't forget that you can also go into the library module in Lightroom, and in grid view, you can filter based on dates. So if you're thinking of it as a way to find your images, that metadata, that date, is already in the images. So you don't necessarily have to include it as part of your file name. But of course, you can if you want. And then if I need to get rid of one of these, I can just click inside the box and tap the Delete key, and that will get rid of it. All right, and here's the little custom text area down here if we want to insert that. And we've seen what that does. If I click Done, it allows me this custom text area. One other thing you might want to think about, let's go back in here to the Edit area. And I'll just clear this out again. You might want to think about other times that you rename your files and create templates for that. And there's two examples that I'm thinking of right now. One of them is when I choose to edit an image from Lightroom into Photoshop, and it takes my original RAW file in Lightroom and creates a PSD or a TIFF file in Photoshop, I like to control the name of that. Usually it just comes up as dashed edit, but we can control that. And I'll show you how to do that in your preferences. So let's make a file name template so we can use that. So here what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to use the actual file name, and then I'm just going to add to the right of it an underscore and then I'm going to add in ME, and that just stands for Master Edited. So I know this is my Master Edited file. And actually, you can see right here, I have a preset already created. So here's my Master Edited preset. And then I have another one for exporting files. And when I export them, they're going to be low res and flat. So I just type that in. And again, you can see here that I have a file name plus a flat low res template that I've already created. So I use this when I export my files, especially if I'm going to export them maybe as a JPEG file and not only lower, not only flatten them, but obviously lower the resolution. All right, so let's take a look. Once we've created all of our presets here and our templates, I'm going to click Cancel. And I'll go ahead and click Cancel out of here, and we'll take a look at when you're going to rename your files. So I know a lot of people rename on Import. So sure enough, I can click Import. And we can navigate to some images that need to be imported. And as long as I'm either copying as DNG or copying the files or moving the files, then I get the file renaming option over here. If I've already copied the files from my card to my hard drive and I'm simply adding them in place, you'll notice I don't get the option to rename the files. So if this is your workflow to add your images in place, then you have to rename them later. But if I were to be using one of the other options, like Copy or Move, then sure enough, I can come over here to File Renaming, check this on, and then select from one of the templates that ship by default or one of your own custom templates. And you can see those templates, even though we created them in the library module, they're going to show up wherever you can rename files in Lightroom. So in this case, you might use your file naming convention. Go ahead and enter in your start number if you need to change that. And then on Import, Lightroom would rename those files. Now another way to, to rename your files is once those images have already been imported, you can simply select the images in the grid view here in the library module, and then choose Library, and then Rename Photos. Again, here we can select from our presets and templates and rename those files. As soon as we click Rename, you can see they've already been renamed. Now, I personally, um, I wait to rename my files. And I know this might sound a little bit odd, but I actually go through and edit my images first, and then I rename them. And the reason that I do that is because I tend to throw away a lot of images. And 
I rename the whole year basically as one giant sequence. And so I don't want any gaps in the sequence, which I know you're probably thinking I'm a little overly tidy right now, but that's just the way I do it because people ask. All right, then sometimes you might mess up. So you should know that if you ever just want to rename one file, you can just select that file. And then here on the right-hand side under metadata, you can see here at the top where it says file name, you can just click in there and then change the file name. And actually, this icon to the right of that is a shortcut to bring up the renaming dialog box. It's the same one that we would have gotten by going for library and then rename photo. Now, if you've got an image that you want to edit in Photoshop, what I would suggest is you go under the Lightroom Preferences. Of course, on Windows, it's underneath the Edit menu. But then go to External Editing, and at the very bottom, you can see where it says Edit Externally File Naming. Here's where you can enter in your own custom template. So this is where I have my template that uses the same file name, but then just adds that ME after it, so that when I have an image, and I say right mouse click and say edit in, and I edit this in Photoshop. When it opens that document in Photoshop, and I were to save that document, you can see that it's added the underscore ME and then TIFF to that document. All right, and when I come back to Lightroom, if I had all of these images selected and I decide that I want to export these files, well, here in the export is where I can choose to rename the files. In this case, maybe I'm saving them as low-res, um, flattened JPEG files. So I can append my original file name with flat and low-res. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you are exporting your files, um, I would suggest that you keep most of the original file name and then just append it because if you change the file name and say hand those images off to your client, then the images that you hand off to your client, those names won't necessarily match the images that you have as your source original. So that could be kind of a hassle to try to go back and, and rematch those up, especially if they're ordering images from you that way. So again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I would just suggest that you figure out what naming convention works for you, create a template in Lightroom, and then continuously and consistently use that template when you're renaming your files. OK, and there's one last thing that I just want to take the time to mention. I'm going to go into the Lightroom preferences again, this time into file handling. I just want you to be a little conscientious about the fact that different operating systems actually consider some characters as being illegal, and they won't understand those characters in a file name, and your images might not post properly. So in order to avoid that, I would go ahead and select this longer list of characters as being illegal, and then just tell Lightroom that you want to replace any of those illegal characters with maybe an underscore or a dash. Excellent. Like I mentioned, there's no right or wrong way to rename your files. I think the most important thing is that you're consistent and you get a file naming convention that you understand and that is easy to work with. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching. Thank you.